Hello and welcome to this WIDAConnect.com presentation. This presentation will deal specifically with the broker and mini core channel where WIDA is the underwriter. Uh, to access the WIDAConnect.com webpage, uh, you'll enter the web address, which is exactly that. It's uh, www www.weda-connect.com. It will bring you to this screen. Um, you'll enter your login and your password, and you're probably wondering, well, where do I get my login and my password from? If you're a delegated administrator, you will receive your login and password from Weda directly after you complete training. And if you're not a delegated administrator, you will get your login and password from your delegated administrator. So after your delegated administrator takes uh, his or her training, they will set up all the users and send out all the passwords to the uh, individuals that they've identified at their institution who need to use or have access to WeToConnect.com, and then they'll send you the, those uh, logins and passwords. Now, if you are a if you are a delegated administrator, there is a separate webinar training that deals specifically with delegated administrators setting up users, resetting passwords, permissions, roles, all that stuff. So uh, please be aware of that. But for now, I will go ahead and log in. And when I first log in, we come to the uh, pipeline screen. So if you operate in multiple channels, we're in the broker channel right now. If you alt if you operate in multiple channels, you'll see multiple channels here. And you'll switch channels depending on which channel you want to register a loan in um, and submit to underwriting. So um, for now, for demonstration purposes, I will register a mini core transaction and what I'll do is I will present this in terms of almost like a pre-approval type situation where the lender wants to get weed as underwriters, uh, kind of like the bare essential documents or the, or the minimum required documents needed to perform an initial underwrite. And then I'll kind of talk through the entire process from start to finish right up until closing and go through document uh, uploads and so on and so forth. So to create a new loan, um, again, Make sure you have the, if you operate in multiple channels, make sure you have the correct uh, portal mode or channel identified and create new loan. There are four different options for creating a new loan and three of them are import options. The import options are a Fannie Mae 3.2 file, Calix point file, and um, you can also, if you're a broker or mini core, You've run the file, or you may have run the file already through uh, DO with WIDA sponsorship. Um, you can use the DO case file ID, enter that here, and then enter your Fannie Mae user ID and password here, and just click the import button, and the data will come actually directly from Fannie Mae's web page, website. Uh, the fourth option, if for one reason or another your workflow isn't um, such that these import options are available to you, especially at the time of pre-approval, which is, tends to be early in the process, the fourth option is to create manually create a purchase loan. And we do that by entering the first name, last name, and social security number. And what the system is going to do is it's going to perform a check of um, the system in terms of looking for other borrowers in the system that have that same first name, last name, or same name, and social security number. Uh, if there is an individual or another loan in the system that has that uh, same borrower name or social security number, you will receive a warning. Uh, it will not prevent you from registering the loan. So now we're taken to the registration screen. And 
this is where you enter the borrower's data in order to you, you enter certain data pieces and your goal here is to try to get the loan program that the borrower is interested to in to show up as an eligible loan program. So everything that needs to be entered in order to make the price slash eligibility button available for selection is identified by a red X, but not necessarily everything that you need to get the program you're looking for is identified by a red X. So other data pieces might have to be entered or changed uh, depending on what loan program you're looking for, and I'll kind of show you what I mean by that in a minute here. Um, so for now, I'll select the loan program type that I'm looking for, so I'll, I'll be looking to uh, register a Fannie Mae-based loan program identified by conventional. And I'll enter a generic property address. Entering the zip code autofills the state, county, and city. You'll just want to make sure that it autofilled correctly. Sales price. You can enter the down payment percent, which will automatically calculate the first lien amount, as you can see here. If the borrower is interested in secondary financing, whether that be a grant, third-party grant provider like Down Payment Plus or AHP, or they're interested in the WIDA Easy Close program, you would select uh, second financing, click the close end button, and then enter the amount of the second financing here. Now if I enter an amount of $5,000, you'll notice that I have my first mortgage loan amount, my second mortgage loan amount, and then the CLTV calculates correctly at 100%. Now, WIDA's program does allow you to go over 100% CLTV, but notice something if I try to do that by entering a uh, amount in the secondary finance, financing that would send it over 100% CLTV, it caps it. So instead of going to 101, it uh, reduces the primary loan amount by $1,000. So uh, how do we get around this? Well, um, what you'll need to do uh, if you want to go over 100% CLTV with the transaction is first change the CLTV to a percent over 100. I'll change it to 105. And then you enter your uh, loan amount. So I'll re-enter my $95,000 loan amount here, and then I'll put in a $8,000 loan amount here, click tab, and what you'll see happen was the CLTV pulled back from 105 to 103, which is the correct CLTV. So it's just a little bit of a system glitch there that if you need to go over 100 100% CLTV, it's it's um, it's uh, you know within WIDA guidelines to do that. You just have to first enter a, a percent over 100 percent. So now I'm at that part where all the red X's are identified, or they're all covered, and the price slash eligibility button is active. However, uh, one more thing that I do want to do is because this data was manually entered, had I imported both the credit report and the credit scores would have imported as well, but uh, since I'm manually entering this, I do need to manually enter the credit score. If I don't, nothing will break, but what's going to happen is the system's going to think that it's a non-traditional or zero credit score borrower application. We don't want that. We're not going to get a very good uh, eligibility check if that's the case. So um, I'll enter three scores here, enter credit, and then I'll click the price slash eligibility button here. And now I have um, two loan programs that are showing up as eligible. I have uh, both Fannie Mae loan programs. Uh, this is our traditional uh, standard Fannie Mae loan program that we've had for a no number of years. And then this is identified by the FTHB first time home buyer program that we announced in uh, January of this year. Um, if you're submitting in mini core, um, if you're submitting in, in the broker channel, you won't see this, but in, in the mini core channel, there are three pricing options available. So this is the same loan program, uh, but there's three different pricing options. If you're, if you're not doing grid pricing, if your institution hasn't um, um, given you that direction, what you're going to want to do is just select the middle option, which is PAR. 
Now, if you'll notice over here, um, the loan program is specifically listed. So the HFA preferred risk sharing no MI program is listed. And down here, the HFA preferred risk sharing no MI program is listed. Or it's also recur uh, referred to as a variance. But what if the borrower is interested in the MI uh, variance part of the program? They actually want to pay MI for you know a few months or a couple years, uh, but get a lower interest rate on their loan. Where is that program? So uh, to find it, uh, you would click here at the, the plus next to display ineligible loan programs, and here here they are. Here's the first time home buyer. Uh, program and, and here's the traditional Fannie Mae program uh, with MI. They show up as ineligible. Uh, the nice thing is it tells you exactly why it's ineligible. It says BPMI required. So uh, if you look down here, where are we here? Property and Loan Info tab, I have this transaction identified as no MI. Well, if I change it to MI, borrower paid monthly, and reprice, what we should see is we should see the two flips. So you'll see the MI program show up on top as eligible and then no MI show up on the bottom as ineligible. So if you are looking for a specific program and it shows up as ineligible, it should tell you why. All you have to do is just change the data and reprice and, and you should be okay. Now I want to, um, the next step is to register the program that I'm interested in. So let's say I'm interested in the first time home buyer program. Um, does it allow me to register it here? No, it doesn't because I have second financing identified. So first, it's going to make me go to a separate screen because the system's wondering, well, what kind of what kind of secondary financing do you want? Do you want the easy close loan program, which shows up here as, as an eligible program, or is it a down payment plus or AHP grant? If it's a down payment plus or AHP grant or some other third party provider. You would click here if seller or other lender provides second financing. Click here if you if you truly do want the easy close loan program, uh, you would click here to register the loan. Now I'm not going to do either um, in this in this instance because um, I'm just trying to demonstrate how it's how it's possible. What I'm going to do is re remove the secondary financing from the transaction, reprice, and then what we should see is the ability to register the loan right out of the main screen. So now it's allowing me to register the either the standard Fannie Mae loan program um, or the first time home buyer specific loan program here. So I want to register um, so that I can upload my documents. So I'll click the register link and then I'm going to get one of those are you sure this is what you want to do messages. And it's important to review that indeed I want to register the FTHB, first time home buyer, HFA preferred with MI, uh, mini core channel, 30 year term transaction. Uh, I agree. Click confirm. And then what we should see is a, um, it's like a registration certificate. It's a validation or a reaffirmation of all the data that we entered into the system. Um, during the registration process. Now, you can print that if you want to. Otherwise, for your file, otherwise just close out. You can retrieve a copy later. A copy will be available in the portal. So now we come to the, the loan's been registered and it shows up in our pipeline. So it's listed right here. And now we're kind of at that point in the process where you've registered the loan. But you have documents that you need to get to WIDA. So you have, you know, let's say you have a pay stub and maybe you've run credit and you get, obtained a VOD. You have your 1003 loan application. Uh, how do I get that stuff to WIDA? So you will upload that using the Open eDocs link right here. eDocs is our electronic document system. And the first thing you'll need to do is identify the doc type. Now, very important to make this note if you're if you're writing notes or um, jotting things down. Um, our document standard requirements. Uh, if WIDA is performing the underwrite, you will need to specifically identify your doc type. So the appraisal needs to be called the appraisal. The offer to purchase needs to be called the offer to purchase. However, there are three categories that we do allow to be grouped or uh, clumped, blobbed, whatever you want to call it. 
um, and those three are income, assets, and credit. So for simplicity purposes for the lender, if you have asset docs, just call it assets. Um, if you have income or if you have credit docs, go into the credit folder. There's all kinds of detail here, but don't worry about that. Again, just keep it simple. Call it credit. Uh, we as underwriters will break down the um, income assets and credit doc types into further detail on our end once we receive the um, documentation from you. And once I've identified the doc type, it, it now allows me to browse or find the PDF um, for the income docs that I want to upload. Now, it does have to be a PDF, so you'll see that here. It tells you uh, PDFs only, up to six at a time, total upload size of 50 megabytes. So I could add uh, my income documents here on this line. I could upload them right away because after I identify where the PDF is, the upload document button becomes available. Otherwise, I could add five more lines total by clicking Add Docs, and I could add my Assets, Credit, 1003, DO Findings Report in all those lines, or any other documents that I have. Maybe I have my GFE and my TIL, um, or my Home Buyer Education Certificate. I could upload those right away as well. So you identify all the documents that you need, that you want to upload, and uh, you know, identify where they are in your system in a folder or network drive, where it, wherever it may be on your desktop, and then you upload those docs. Um, then they'll be uploaded to the doc list, which you'll see here. Uh, if you click over the doc list tab, anything that you've uploaded would be listed here. And now they are available for WIDA's viewing or retrieval. Now. Is that all you need to do? No, it's not actually. Um, if you upload those documents, WIDA will know that you've uploaded them, but WIDA won't know necessarily that you want to pat, you know, uh, give us the ball for us to run with it or give us the baton for us to kind of, um, those are a couple of analogies I use to explain. Um, at some point, the lender needs to tell WIDA all the documents that I want you to have at this point in time are uploaded into the eDocs folder. Now you can take it and get it to your underwriters. So how do you do that? Well, when you register a loan, first of all, you'll be, at, you'll be assigned conditions and tasks. Now the conditions line up with our application package checklist currently. And these are all the documents that you need to get to WIDA in order to take a loan essentially from its start to its finish. So um, start to finish, these are these are all the documents that you have. However, obviously, especially in the in this instance of a pre-approval, you aren't going to have all these documents ready right away. You're not going to have the um, appraisal. You're probably not going to have the offer to purchase yet. Um, things of that nature. So, how do you know what documents you need to get to WIDA for us to begin the process or, or just to issue the pre-approval? Well, in addition to the conditions that you're assigned, you'll also be assigned a task. So if you click the task, um, it's listed right here. It tells you exactly what you need to do to get everything that WIDA needs to underwrite the file and make an underwriting decision uh, to WIDA. So it says, upload the 1003 loan application, DO findings report, income, assets, and credit needed to underwrite the file then resolve this task. So I've shown you how to upload the documents, um, but now we have to resolve the task because they had, the documents have been uploaded and we didn't know that they're being uploaded, but we don't, again, necessarily know that you intend um, for the file to progress to our underwriters. So we need, the, we need the task resolved. If you click on the task, you'll notice, again, the, the verbiage is up here uh, regarding exactly what you'll need to do. But the task will be assigned to the individual who creates the loan. And the task owner is listed as, as um, WIDA's processing department. So when you resolve the task um, as the person that's assigned to, WIDA's, under, WIDA's, WIDA's processing department will receive a email notifying us that this task has been resolved. And then we'll know that it's our turn again to take the ball and run with it. Um, if you do not resolve the task, and again, this is one of those things where if you're writing notes, please write this down. If you do not resolve the task, it's the equivalent of 
preparing docs to fax to WIDA, putting them on the fax machine and not pressing the send button. Or it's the equivalent of making paper copies of documents to send to WIDA overnight in overnight mail, putting them in any overnight folder, but not putting them in the mail. Um, if you do not click resolve, we will not know that it's your intent for those documents to get to our underwriters. So um, I would click the resolve button and the task notification would be sent to WIDA's processing department. WIDA's processing department would do like a data and doc scrub and then they would submit the uh, file to our underwriters. Now as this is happening, what you'll notice um, if you're logged into the portal is you'll see the status change. So right now it says registered. Um, once our processing department does their data and doc scrub and submits it, um, status will change to submitted. When an underwriter grabs it, it will change to in underwriting. And when the underwriter makes their decision, whether that be like a pre-approval or suspense, um, the loan status will also reflect that. Um, so they'll status the file. They will um, then do two things. They'll upload the letter, whether that be the pre-approval or, again, suspense letter into the eDocs folder where you can uh, retain. So if you click the loan and uh, go into the eDocs folder, kind of where I showed you before, where the docs are listed after you upload them, um, any, any documents that WIDA uploads would also be listed here. So you could retrieve the document at that time. Um, second thing they'll do is they'll send you a generic email saying your file's been statused. Uh, log into you know www.wedaconnect.com to obtain your letter. So at that point, you kind of have two choices. You can do that. You can log in and you know print your letter out of the eDocs folder, uh, work up you know a paper copy. Otherwise, another thing you'll notice is if you have, let's say you've you did upload 10 conditions. You uploaded your, you know, again, your income assets and credit, your 1003. Um, but then let's also say you, you included the GFE, TIL, the WIDA forms, home buyer education certificate to where you uploaded a, a total of 10 conditions. So after the underwriter status is the file, reviews and status is the file, and you log in again, not only will you see the status changed to you know, pre-approved, you'll have your letter available to you, but you'll also see the conditions shrink to 25 because they'll sign off on the conditions that um, have been met. So you have two choices. You can either work off paper, you can work electronically. It's, it's your decision. Now, let's say a week goes by and the borrower that's been pre-approved shows up in your office with a offer to purchase and a condition report. So how do I get that to WIDA? Well, it's the same way. You click the eDocs link here, and you would upload at that point the, that's in the property folder, offer to purchase contract. You would off, upload that offer to purchase contract here. Uh, identify what, where, where the PDF is, and then click upload docs. Now, the nice thing about the second time around and, and um, um, going forward from there is once the file's been assigned to a WIDA underwriter, once a WIDA underwriter owns that file, Anything that you upload uh, to the eDocs folder, that underwriter will automatically receive an email notification. So there's no need, you know, that second time around, third time, fourth time, fifth time, etc., to resolve any task. Um, you only need to resolve the tasks during the initial submission, and then anything once an underwriter owns the file, has the file, has decision to file that you upload, the underwriter will know about it. Um, so it's a little bit more user friendly. And the process kind of goes back and forth on and on until uh, you know our, our underwriter will review the offer to purchase. Hopefully they'll sign off on that right away and possibly the condition report. And then instead of 25 conditions, you have 23. And again, on and on and on until there's no conditions remaining and that status has eventually reached clear to close, clear to close status, at which point you, the lender, are clear to close the loan. Now, once you've closed, um, you have closing docs. How do I get the closing docs to WIDA? Again, right here, uh, open e the eDocs folder and doc type. Nice thing about the closing docs, one doc type. So whether it be the final loan application, final till, whatever documentation, settlement statement that you may have, just lump it into one big clump, call it closing docs, and upload it. Uh, very simple process. We, again, WIDA's underwriters will receive notification that you've uploaded that doc type. 
and that's pretty much it.